What is up guys, it's boy Gonzo and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm actually gonna revisit one of my older videos, which is how to structure your beats, but this time with actual advice and uh, some hot tips. Let's just jump into it. So as you can see, we have this loop, which I'm gonna play in a second. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually turn this into a full song with an intro, a build up, some sort, uh, the verse, the bridge, the second verse and then the outro. All right, so this is what we're gonna be turning into a full song. I know, it's a surprise, I actually made melodies. I don't know, I felt inspired. It's still ass, but you know, it's just an example. For the melodies, I actually used Flex, which is a really nice plugin, especially that's built in into FL. For the melodies, we have a piano, string I think and then I added some blocks I think and then the last thing which is also a synth uh, but it's an ARP And that's about it with the melodies. Then for the drums, I have the classic kick, which I EQ'd this time. It sounds extra dirty because uh, I actually didn't mute it inside of a P controller, which I'm using for the sidechain. Kinda sounds like a basketball hitting the concrete, I guess. Then for the 808, I actually uh, split it up into two tracks we have the sub and then we have uh the upper harmonics which are the distortion and everything so first of all you have this which is basically just a low cut and then i made sure that it's actually uh not gonna bleed and i slightly turned down the bass and then for the upper harmonics we have basically the opposite And I used uh, FabFilter Saturn or Saturn, whatever, for distortion because Camel Crusher isn't working. So that's that. And then Fruity Chorus, uh, which has the stereo knob set to 69 degrees. Nice. Then for the hats, we have a simple hi-hat pattern with some extra rolls. And then some uh, open hats. And also a rim shot. And then we have a crow with a delay and a crash with also delay. With and that's it. Now it's actually time to transform this into a proper song. So first of all, we're going to add it inside of the playlist by just, you know, selecting the pattern and then clicking into the playlist. And then we're going to go back to the pattern menu and select split by channel which is basically gonna split everything into different layers. So it's gonna be easier to, you know, move around. So we're gonna press on the first pattern, which is the kicks, and then hold shift and press on the last pattern to select all of them. And now we're just gonna drag them in. All we gotta do is create our arrangement. So we're gonna drag the melodies and let's say we're gonna have them as the beginning section and then we're just gonna loop these and now we pretty much have a basic structure so it's gonna start with the melody and then we're just gonna jump into the drums uh, nine bars in which is roughly 15 seconds depending on the bpm too but the thing is we normally wouldn't want to have all of the melodies at once because we're gonna get bored of them pretty easily so we just gotta choose what would be the first one to come up so i'm i'm saying the piano would be the best thing to have as the main thing so Let's get rid of everything and then see how it sounds like when basically everything comes in. Now I'm gonna get rid of the plugs because I feel like they shouldn't come in right at the intro. And let's see what else we could remove so we can keep this remotely simple and still not use everything that we got in the intro. So I'm definitely gonna get rid of this synth 
just because it's a bit too out of the blue. And I'm pretty satisfied with what we have so far for the intro. And now that the main intro is done, I don't want to jump straight into the verse. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the kick, D808 too, the snare and the clap, and uh, also the arp. Maybe let's live in the synth. I'm going to keep the open hats. I'm going to get rid of the crash and the crow too. And now let's see how this sounds like. Also get rid of the rim shot. Alright, so I like the structure so far. I feel like some things are kind of louder than they're supposed to be, but that's easy to, to fix. Just, you know, play with the mixer. For an example, I had to turn down the snares, and also I'm gonna turn down this synth thingy. And I'm also gonna turn down the open hats because I feel like they're a bit too loud, so we're gonna select them and just turn down the velocity. And what we could do actually is make this first hi-hat pattern unique, then go back inside of the piano roll and just create a tiny ramp like this, maybe. Just so the transition from the intro to the hi-hats and build up and everything goes smoother so it doesn't feel as abrupt, you know? And that's pretty much it with the intro and the verse, because for the verse you'd probably just loop uh, the melody a few times depending on how long you want the verse to be but also to create some variation what you could do is get rid of the kicks like this and um, maybe the arp in this case and just let's play it out so basically what I'm trying to say is just do something that's gonna surprise the ears of the listener just so you don't hear the same thing even though maybe this is gonna have someone rapping over it or singing or whatever just try to keep it variated even though it's if you're using the same elements but getting rid of some of them at some points actually really make a difference now it's time for the bridge so once again we need something to transition into the bridge you don't want it to be abrupt and weird so i'm gonna take these kicks you can see that they end with like a boom boom boom, boom which is okay but then there's nothing coming after them so it sounds weird so i'm gonna get rid of these last four kicks pretty good once again let's copy the piano because that's our main thing and these strings We could also make the hi-hats unique and basically create a fading effect, which is by doing the same thing that we did with the intro. So just create a ramp like this. And you could also uh, cut the 808 when the snare hits, but I feel like that could be abrupt too. But I do have an idea on how to fix that. So we're actually just going to use what we have so far. We're going to make these patterns unique. And what I'm going to do is click on this note to basically copy it. We're going to paste it above, doesn't really matter where. We're going to double click on it and we're going to enable sliding. And now I'm going to highlight the note by using control and I'm going to turn down the velocity and move it on F sharp. And now it's going to sound like this. So we're basically creating a fading note. We're fading the note, we're actually sliding the note to the same note, but on a different op Velocity, no, velocity. And we're gonna do the same thing with the um, 
upper harmonics of the 808 by just making this one unique too, and then just deleting these notes and pasting them back in since it's the same notes. And now let's check this out. So now, once again, we're going to be using the same thing that we used in the intro for the bridge. We still want to have the most important elements of the melodies, which are, you know, the pianos, the strings, whatever. But we also need to build up another, I suppose, tension towards the second verse. So you could either just simply copy the whole thing or grab some elements from it to make a different build up towards the second verse. So in this case, I don't really want to make it too cluttered because I don't want to have a bridge that's as long as the verse so i feel like these four elements is enough maybe adding a crash that would help it and now honestly you can just simply copy and paste the second verse you could always create variation by removing some of the elements if you feel like they don't belong in the second verse like maybe getting rid of the arp entirely or anything like that and for the outro you can basically just use the main things of the melodies and um, getting rid of some of them one by one, like this maybe. And also, let's say, getting rid of this last note so it doesn't make us feel like there's more to come from that element, because there's nothing left after it besides the piano. And also making this unique and getting rid of this last note is gonna make it feel like it's the end, basically. And you can always create a volume automation to actually pan everything down, give the proper idea that, yeah, this is the end of the song. And now I'm actually going to show you guys some uh, tips on how to make the intro and the outro and the bridge and everything a bit more interesting. I probably showed this before, uh, but not in a video like this where I'm actually going through everything. So let's start with the intro. To make the intro a bit more interesting, you'll need a few plugins. I mean, one plugin, or you can use Grow Speed. But I'm gonna be using Halftime because I like it better. So let's add the effect and let's see how it sounds like from the get go. All right, so it's a bit too aggressive from the get go, but let's change the looping from one bar to one half. Okay, it, it, it is better, but it's a bit weird. So let's play with the bands, maybe leave some upper harmonics come in so it's not as weird. Or actually play with the mix knob and the bands. Okay, so something like this. Now we're actually gonna automate the mix knob in the master thingy, and we're gonna turn it all the way down by the time that the hi-hats come in. So it's gonna be completely off when the hi-hats come in, like this. And now, to make it even more interesting, we're gonna add a reverb. And we're gonna start off by setting the wet level all the way up. And maybe turning the dry knob up to like 70%, 75%. And we're also gonna turn up the decay time, 6 to 10 seconds. The size too, but we're gonna turn on the low cut, just so it's not way too crazy. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the half time, which is gonna be automating the dry knob or the wet knob, whatever the mix knob in the master, and basically do the same thing. So that way, by the time the half time effect is done, the reverb is also gone. We're gonna create a automation clip for the master volume, and uh, we're basically doing the opposite of what we did with these automations. So we're gonna start off by copying the value of the master because it's on 80%, and the default FL uh, magnification, like the way you see the things, 
uh, make it so you can only use 79% or 81, I think. So it's not going to be exactly on 0 dB, which is what we want to have it on. So we're just going to copy the value on this point, And then we're going to paste it where we want to finish the automation, basically. So paste value. And now we can move this one in piece. So let's make the volume go up like a ramp. And there you have it. But that's pretty much it with this video. Um, I hope you guys managed to learn something and get the better idea on the structuring. Because, you know, I mean, of course, it's going to come down to what you're producing. A lot of trap beats start with the drums. A lot of trap beats have way longer intros. It really depends on what you want to achieve. But this is just a uh, general idea on the structure. You learn about these things the more you produce and the more you keep on learning. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I wanted to say that for the next 24 hours, there's a 50% sale on my website. All of my drum kits are 50% off. And if you're looking to buy custom beats, you can get one for 50 bucks compared to 150 for the next 24 hours. If you want to get more info on the beat, please DM me on Instagram. You have the links in the description. But that's going to do it for this video. If you have any video suggestions, please let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>